First of all, as it relates to the operators of so-called vendors of charitable raffles, current law precludes anyone but a nonprofit from operating a charitable raffle. This does nothing to change existing law. In terms of the electronic ticket machine, all this is is simply an electronic ticket device that spits out a ticket and manually spits a ticket into a bucket where they do a manual draw. And as the chairman said, we've clarified this last year. If there's further, further clarification that's needed um, to make folks feel safe, that it's simply nothing more than an electronic ticket printing machine, we're fine with that. Um, there was no intent to, to um, um, impede on, on tribal gaming, which we don't think it does. Furthermore, in terms of regulations, we've been working with the Department of Justice and the Attorney General's Office for the past six months on trying to come up with regulations. While you don't have it today, I have shared with all of your staff that we were offered amendments last Wednesday. We have put it into Ledge Council. We would create regular, a robust regulatory oversight um, to the $10 fee. It would actually increase the fees for the professional sports teams that operate the charitable raffles all with the intent of providing more enforcement, more investigation, and providing comfort level and oversight so that everybody knows that these raffles are being done in the correct way. And so we don't see as expansion of gaming. It occurs in 40 other states right now. Um, it has been successful. There haven't been any problems. And it really is a way to connect the fans to participate in philanthropic giving so that they can give to their local community charities, not only in their local areas, but as I've shown all of your staff, in communities and districts where there are no professional sports teams. And by the way, this, uh, the monies that are received uh, uh, are in addition to the funding that's already been given by these different professional teams to the community. So it doesn't supplant. Yeah, Senator Weisso, you have a question? Yes, I wanted to see uh, if there's somebody here that's ever administered one of these, uh, uh, what do we call them, a fundraising effort, a lottery, what is it called? 50-50 raffle. It's a raffle. Yeah. Okay, so if we couldn't call it a 50-50 raffle because it wouldn't be legal to, to currently offer. So I want to I want to speak to somebody that has done a 90-10 raffle in the past. Um, on behalf of since well, is there anybody here present that has no. any experience in in uh, conducting a 90-10 raffle uh, in relation? Now, just so I understand, because I see there's a lot of sports teams here. Is this done with relations to a sports venue? Let's say if I go to a baseball game, would it be offered at that game? Actually, in California, to our knowledge, only one sports team, since this has been in law, has actually done a 90-10 raffle because it's such a large venue. A 90-10 works in a smaller venue where you may have a few hundred people or so, but in a sports venue where you could have 17,000, 40,000, 60,000, it has been so daunting. So the Los Angeles Kings, did one 90-10 raffle over the entire season of 40 games and raised $4,000. So how does it work? Is it so, uh, it's not done with the, because I know that in, I've heard of, uh, you know, if you buy a ticket to a game, a certain percentage of the proceeds of the ticket goes to a nonprofit. This, is, this wouldn't be that. No, this is really, it started with, um, the Canadian hockey teams that started a, a decade or so ago trying to figure out a way where you already have fans in the seats. And so it was trying to figure out, is there an opportunity to get fans to participate in philanthropic giving? And what they found was by doing a 50-50 raffle, it really engaged their fans in wanting to give to the charitable foundation. And remember, all of the proceeds from the charitable foundation of sports teams gets doled out to local charities. Um, in your district, Little Leagues. Um, in, in all of your districts, Little Leagues, hockey, um, youth hockey, um, all of those various venues, basketball courts. Um, you heard from veterans groups and TLSC. All of that money actually then gets spent out in the community given to charity. So if I was a team and I said, I want to, today, uh, the grand prize is $100,000 if you buy a $10 ticket, and if, um, people buy that ticket and only 100,000 is raised and 100,000 is given as a prize, would that be legal currently in California? Because it wasn't, it wasn't uh, promoted as a, uh, you know, uh, necessarily that a certain percentage would go to the nonprofit. The, the idea is to raise money, but if people Correct. don't buy tickets and one buys a ticket, you have to make good on the agreement. Correct. So, how would that work in that instance? Would, would, this, would this be allowed under this? I'm just trying to understand what program we're approving today. Because I don't, I don't, what, what program I, you're I thought I understood until 
I saw that there will be a reduction in the percentage given to the nonprofit. I don't understand how that triggers more of a contribution to the nonprofit when you're actually reducing the percentage. Because what you're doing is what the 50-50 does, and I'll bring up the Cincinnati Reds, the case example. Prior to doing the 50-50 raffle, doing a printout ticket, they raised $400,000. How? Um, just through, this was in Cincinnati, or this was in Ohio, so it was obviously different. Um, they raised it through other means of, of um, you know, manual type raffle, um, offering baseball bats, signature cards, autographs. But even with this bill, you couldn't do that here? No, they will still do those activities. What this bill will do and how a 50-50 raffle works is the first patron walks in, buys a ticket for a dollar, the now the pot has one dollar in essence, and you basically will raise, if you could raise $10,000 in a game, $5,000 of that would go to the winner, and 5,000 would go to the team's charitable foundation. With one dollar that was raised? What? With one dollar that was raised? No, I said, or it you gets lost, to, let's say, 10,000. Let's say you sell $10,000 worth of tickets, okay. or you raise 10,000 at that night's event. 5,000 would go to the winner, 5,000 goes to the charitable foundation of the sports team or the designated charity that was designated that night. For instance, the San Diego Padres might designate tonight Autism Speaks Night so that every fan in that stadium who buys a ticket for the 50-50 raffle understands that the proceeds that the team raises goes to Autism Speaks on that night. But it would, it would, that would be the case under 90-10 rule. So if 10,000 was raised under 90-10 rule, that would be 90, 90, uh, 9,000 would go to the nonprofit and 10,000 would go to the prize. Yeah, I, I think I know where you're going. I, I think I can explain it. It's, it's a smaller percentage, right. but of a much bigger pot. Right, right. Because 50% because, because gets to go. I'm trying to get them to explain how it becomes a bigger pot when you okay. have a it limited becomes, pool of, it becomes a, bigger pot of a crowd, especially it, in, in some of our stadiums where less people are attending. Okay, let, so. let, me, let me explain. It becomes a bigger pot because if, if I know that I only get a 10% back, I'm not really interested in giving $100 so that I can win 110 if I, or, or, or what 10% of the total pot. If, if I know I'm getting 50% of the total pot, I'm much more likely to participate. So you have many, many more people participating. And when many more people participate, the pot gets much bigger. And then even though the charity is only getting 50% instead of 90%, it's 50% of a lot more. And, 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 and I, I get that. But when, when it's for a nonprofit, you figure people want to participate to support the nonprofit. Yeah, it doesn't happen. No. no, they want to make money. And, and, and for me that wants to support a nonprofit, I don't want to give uh, $10 knowing that five will be given to somebody that will walk away with that $5 and it's not going to help the nonprofit. So if we're, at, who are we trying to appeal to? People that want to support a nonprofit or people that want well, to win a I big mean, prize? I mean, that sounds good with all due respect, Mr. Chair. And let me just bring this back to where mm -hmm. we need to be with this. Um, I think the objective is to get as much resources to our nonprofit communities, right? And so if it means then that we have to reduce to 50-50 to get $500,000 to the nonprofits as opposed to keeping it at 90-10 where you only get, where you only get uh, 500. But if I can tell you, uh, your bill doesn't assure that it will go to underserved communities. It'll go to nonprofit, but not to an underserved it, community. It will, it will go. I would feel more comfortable supporting this if I knew it would go to an underserved community. Well, it will go to nonprofit community, non the nonprofit community that is helping uh, our community in the state of California survive with a myriad of different issues, whether it's breast cancer, whether it's autism, it's the Boys and Girls Clubs, uh, the YWCA, uh, so forth and so on. And there's a list and a slew, with all due respect, senators, of nonprofit organizations, dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of them that have signed up to support this this, uh, this measure because they themselves understand uh, the importance right now. You heard from the Kings said they support over a thousand nonprofits themselves and all the other uh, teams that are associated with this have also supported thousands of other nonprofits. The Dodgers, for instance, is one of the biggest supporters. They have their number one uh, uh, um, uh, urban league in Compton where they're training thousands and thousands of people and they're one of the main sponsors of this. So I disagree with all due respect, Senator, 
uh, that this bill uh, would not support uh, uh, minority communities and struggling communities. Senator Gaines, you got a question? I just had a question of clarification because there is um, this fundraiser for Ronald McDonald House. And I don't know if you're familiar with it, but I'm wondering if someone could explain to me what that is versus what's being proposed because you can buy tickets for $150, you can buy a million dollar home, and yet proceeds go to the charity. I don't know, Andrew, if you could. I, I actually on that received or... the same mailer, I believe, and I can't speak on behalf of Ronald McDonald House. I think they get a home donated somewhere in the hills from okay. somebody for two and a half million. I know they cap their ticket sales at 40, I just got a mailer a few weeks ago, 40,000 tickets. Um, and then one and a half million, or you can get one and a half million in cash. I don't know what the percentage, I mean, right now it's a 90-10 rule, so I imagine that 90% of the proceeds they get. So if they sell 40,000 tickets at a dollar or $10, whatever it is, they get to keep 90% of the proceeds. No more discount, um, but again, I don't represent, and I okay. can't speak to that, but I do know that what Senator Block has said is absolutely correct, which is right now 90-10 raffles aren't occurring at professional sporting events because they're untenable. Okay. It is creating a larger pool of funds, and what teams and charities across the country have experienced is that by increasing a large pool of funds, the 50% actually raises more money than the 90-10 does, okay. and in fact, 90-10s aren't occurring nowadays. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. You certainly can with the bill. Yes. Senator McGuire, did you have one last comment? I was going to make the uh, same, uh, act, take the same action as Senator Hill, is to be able to move <laughs> the bill and just to say, uh, personal experience, not that I have sold 50-50 at local high school football games before, <laughs> but if I did, uh, it's the largest fundraiser of the year for the local boosters club. Uh, but. Not saying that I have. <laughs> Thank you very much. With that, the bill, the bill has been moved. Uh, Secretary, please call the roll. Motions please. do pass and re refer to the Public Safety Committee. Hall? Aye. Hall, I. Berryhill? Aye. Berryhill, I. Block? Aye. Block, I. Gaines? Aye. Gaines, I. Galgiani? Hernandez? Aye. Hernandez, I. Hill? Aye. Hill, I. Weso? Laura? Laura, I. McGuire? Aye. McGuire, I. Vidak? Aye. Vidak, I. Brent has not. Thank you. Currently, it has nine. We'll hold the roll open, but we do uh, at this time probably should raise the calls. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. All right. Item one is SB 119 by Senator Hill. The current vote is five to one, with the chair and vice chair both voting aye. Absent members block. Aye. Block aye. Gaines. Galgiani. Hernandez. Aye. Hernandez aye. McGuire. Yes, and I understand that they're. Further discussion with agriculture? Yes. Uh, Judish. McGuire, aye. With it. Aye. Eight to one. Gaines, no. Eight to one. Item number two represents the consent calendar of items two and ten. Current vote is five to zero. Absent members, Gaines. Gaines, aye. Galgiani. Hernandez. Aye. Hernandez, aye. Weso. Laura. Laura, I. McGuire? I. McGuire, I. It's nine to zero. Item three, SB 449. Current vote is nine to zero. Absent members, Block? I. Block, I. Galgiani. That's 10 to zero. Item four, SB 462. Current vote is five to zero. Absent members, Gaines? I. Gaines, I. Galgiani. Hernandez? I. Hernandez, I. Weso? Laura? Aye. Laura, I. McGuire? I. McGuire, I. That's nine to zero. Item number five, SB 547, Lou. Current vote is six to three. Absent members, Block. Aye. Block, I. Galgiani. Aye. Galgiani, I. That's eight to three. Okay, I'll go back to one through five after. Item number six, SB 549, current vote is nine to zero. Absent members, Galgiani. Galgiani, I, Weso. That's 10 to zero. Item number seven, SB 685 by Senator McGuire, current vote is nine to zero. Absent members, Block. Aye. Block, I, Galgiani. Aye. Galgiani, I, that's 11 to zero. 
Item 8, SB 692 by Senator Vidat. Current vote is 7 to 0. Absent members block. Aye. Block aye. Gaines. Aye. Gaines aye. Galgiani. Aye. Galgiani aye. McGuire. Aye. McGuire aye. That's 11 to 0. Item 9, SB 703 by Senator Leno. Current vote is 4 to 2. Absent members Gaines. No. Gaines no. Galgiani. Aye. Galgiani aye. Waso. Laura. Aye. Laura aye. McGuire. Aye. McGuire, aye. Seven to three. And we'll go back and do one through five. Item one, uh, is current vote is eight to one. Absent members, or actually it must be nine to one. Absent member Galgiani. Galgiani, aye. Ten to one. Item two is currently nine to zero. Absent members Galgiani. Galgiani, aye. Waso. That's 10 to 0. Item number 3, uh, 10 to 0 currently. Absent member Galgiani. Galgiani, aye. That's 11 to 0. Item 4, currently 9 to 0. Absent member Galgiani. Waso. 10 to 0. And item number 5, we have you, is 8 to 3. So we're good All right. To go. yeah. All right. Okay, I think we've uh, cleared. Uh, the docket, and uh, we have been here since 9.30. Time now is 11.30, and this is the longest GO meeting I believe I've conducted over the last several years, and I pray the others don't go as long. Uh, with that, uh, we will adjourn. Thank you. <laughs>